Hey everyone, welcome back to another KSP tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you what the hell and how the hell to use the uh, Keythane tutorial. So uh, first up, <laughs> you're going to need to of course copy the uh, Keythane directory when you download this into your uh, game data directory. So you're going to have the Keythane directory and you're going to just throw that into your game data directory and then it should load up and you'll notice that you do have your Keythane installed because once you do start up your game, you will see, of course, a nice, wonderfully gridded uh, load screen, if it'll ever load. And on uh, that load screen, you'll notice that it uh, has its uh, Keythane hexagons installed. So, uh, as you do see, you do see already the Keythane hexagons installed. So, uh, you already know that your Keythane is installed once you see this. Now, let's load up any actual map itself, or any... Best of all, I don't know why, but my computer seems to be lagging quite a bit. It's probably because of the temperature. It's very hot. It's quite difficult to cool it down in this temp. So, once you're in your actual, uh, that being VAB or vehicle assembly or uh, plane assembly building, you're going to notice you have a couple of new items. Now, most of these items are storage tanks, so you do have your storage tanks for Keythane, larger, smaller, up to 16,000 units of storage tanks, and of course you have the mini, mini ones, nice side storage tanks for maybe your drones, 150. And then you have the uh, wonderful en engine, the uh, turbine engine, Keythane turbine engine, which is actually pretty good. It has at uh, sea level 2,300 and in vacuum 1,000. Now, in comparison to your nuclear engine, it has in a vacuum 800. So pretty much your Keythane engine, in a way, is a hell of a lot better. You do have 200 more ISP in vacuum. Uh, I don't know about the fuel efficiency, but power-wise in vacuum, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I presume the fuel efficiency, it doesn't, it doesn't consume that much as well. So uh, the Keythane might be up for challenging the actual nuke when it comes down to using this in space and as well at sea level 2300. So that's pretty good. Again, maximum power is 200, so keep that in mind. Now, anyway, so this is the new parts here in terms of that. And now if you jump all the way down to your utilities, you're going to have a couple of parts. You're going to have the medium converter, which converts your keythane to pretty much anything you want. Monopropellant, as you see, xenon gas, oxidizer, and liquid fuel. You do have the ratios, right? So you do have keythane consumption 2.3 liters and power consumption 6. So you do have an idea of how much it actually takes. And then you have the larger converter, which is pretty, pretty big here. And uh, the uh, large converter converts, let's say, the liquid fuel 6.8 liters to consume that, and power consumption uh, 12. But conversion efficiency 103%, conversion efficiency 9.7%. So, of course, this one uh, consumes 6.8 liters, but you're getting 103% out of it, while this one you're getting 97%. So, it's just a little bit as efficient the smaller ones. So, to summarize it, of course, uh, your conversions need drills. So what you're going to then go is to your... No, no, it's right here. You have your drills. You're going to have the smaller drill, which uh, when it starts drilling, it uh, drills 1.25 liters per second, and then the larger drill, which drills 5 liters per second. And now keep that in mind. So if you do have the small one, the small one is able to consume 2.3 liters, right? So uh, pretty much the small one, this is 1.25 times 2, so you're ending up with 2.5 liters uh, end up with 2.5 liters if you have two of the small drills, but it can consume only 2.3. So pretty much two small drills will overproduce the amount of ketane. You'll have a surplus of 0.2 liters of ketane per second for your actual converter. Just, just keep that in mind so you have a perspective. Now, of course, the big one consumes 6.8 and the massive drill is 5. So you're pretty much left with 2.8. You can still... Uh, to 100% uh, utilize your converter, you still are left with 2.8 liters of keythane that you can mine out. So this is 1.25, so what you do is one big drill and two small drills will give you around 7.5. 7. Wait, hold on. 6.25, uh, 6 this is 6.28. Yeah, so no, what you do is one big drill would give you 5 liters and one small drill that would give you in total 1.6.25 liters and the limit of the big converter is 6.8. So you're still left with a little bit of surplus for the converter, but that's as efficient as you can get it to uh, using. So if you're having one of these big guys, then I suggest you build one small, one big drill and one small drill. Or if you're going for the small drill, so you're having 1.25 times 2, so that's 2.5 times 2, so that's 5. That's 4 of those. So then you're probably going to be building 
Five, if I'm not mistaken. Shit, I hope I got it right. Five. I guess so. Five, yeah, so that's 6.25. Yeah. So then you're going to be building either five of the small ones or one big one, one small one if you have in the big one. Of course, the big one is five, five liters per second you're drilling. And of course, this can only process 2.3 liters per second. So there's no way you can have a big drill and a small one. Keep that in mind when you're actually building it up. Yeah, you do, you do need to keep this in mind. So these are, these are pretty much all the new things that you get with your Keythane. And of course, this, this consumes Keythane, but gives you a generation, power generation. 75, uh, 75... Oh, uh, what do you call it? 75 units of uh, energy per second. And of course, the byproduct is xenon gas. Now, I'm not sure if the xenon gas, if you have tanks on, it'll get stored. I didn't test that out. Maybe it might actually, if you have xenon tanks on your actual ship, it might, the uh, byproduct might be stored. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, probably not. I, I really don't know. Maybe, you know, it, it really depends. You know, it would make sense if it would. You know, why not? So now, why the hell do you think? Why, why, why do people need this? Because, of course, uh, the converters and the drills use a massive amount of electricity. So sometimes either you're going to have a shitload of batteries on board, or you're going to have a shitload of solar panels on board, or you can have a couple of these. So this is 75 units of energy per second. And, of course, this consumes only 83, and this consumes 8 per second. So you can see one of these can pretty much power up a couple of these drills and converse so pretty much one should be able to cover all that stuff and of course it's lighter so the weight of this is 1.25 and now you have to calculate how many solar panels how many batteries how much of the other crap that you're going to need to actually power up all this other stuff as well so it might just be more efficient to just build one of these guys or place one of these guys on your ship instead of building a shitload of solar panels and a shitload of batteries so you can power that up but then again in turn you are not going to be consuming that 0.5 ketane per second to produce your electricity so you will actually uh, amount to harvesting all your ketane so now this is just a quick quick description in terms of what you need or what you got to keep in mind in terms of uh, doing this so uh, i hope you guys got that now now let's get to the interesting part now um ah oh shit i forgot uh one actually the scanning items so let's just jump back again I'll show you the scanning items it doesn't really matter where we go so once you have the converters placed on your ship and you have the correct number of drills placed on your ship and then you have of course your tanks placed so you can actually store the damn thing on your ship maybe take a turbine in case you can use the turbine in zero gravity as well so keep that in mind so this is really cool if you're in space that's why I mentioned it you can use it in space now uh, the uh, last thing, you go to science and you're going to have your scanners here. This, I have no idea what the hell this is supposed to be for. I never really made, uh, never really figured out what the hell this was supposed to be for, but never mind. And now we do have the survey units. You have the medium survey unit, which is a scanner. So if you place this on your uh, ship, it starts to scan. It doesn't matter where you place it. It doesn't need to be pointed downwards, upwards. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, not that realistic. Just stick it on your ship and it'll start to scan, obviously, the... Um, planet below your moon whatever it is it doesn't matter where you place it on your ship so you can stick it wherever the hell you want and then you have the smaller version of the scanner what's the difference of course the power consumption but the main difference is is the minimum altitude that you can use this at so the minimum altitude is 1.2 million for this you can be high but the minimum altitude for this is 250,000 so pretty much the survey unit you can use maybe in your planes when you're flying over or very low and this you should pretty much stick on your satellites so you can actually scan the ground at very high altitudes you got to be at least 1.2 a uh, million meters high not necessary it really works even below i did use it even below but still this obviously works substantially higher up in uh, the altitude so of course that's pretty cool in terms of having a satellite around of course the higher you go you won't scan more cubes but we'll get to that so yeah now let's get to the part of actually scanning your ships themselves so let's jump now to uh, come on come on Let's jump now to my actual control center. I think I do have a couple of satellites out there that are going to be scanning. Now that's my small fuel tanker. Oh no, this is the actual wrong save. So here I am. I'm going to now uh, jump to one of my satellites, one of my scanning satellites, and I'm going to show you what I have here. Again, I was learning, so we'll see if I actually jump to uh, the uh, upgraded satellite or the older version. Yep. Here it is. Here's the upgraded satellite. You see I have four scanners and I have a shitload of batteries and I, of course I have for solar panels to power it up so now in terms of scanning 
when you launch your satellite in space, make sure it's not a perfect 90 degree circle, because if it is 90 degree circle, you won't be scanning. So always try to give it an angle. Give it a weird angle, as you see this way. Always make it tilted, slanted, so every time it goes around the globe, it'll scan up more. Now, uh, what I would recommend you to do is to place at least two of the large ones. Not anymore, I put four for the sake of it, but really maximum what you should place is two, because like that, then you can actually accelerate at 100 times per second, and you will be able to scan every single dot. Of course, if I accelerate more than 100 times per second, even with four or five, it'll still start missing the actual scan. So let me show you where I am now. Let's just speed it up a bit. You'll see that it's scanning there. I'm at 100. See, it's scanning. Scanning perfectly. It's scanning every single dot. Now, with one scanner, it wouldn't be able to scan uh, all, all the dots after each other. Now, it should be able to... Uh, you see, it's scanning, scanning, it should scan here. Now, but if I increase it... And I follow its pattern... It, it's gonna start leaving... Well, there's so much scanned. But anyways, as you'll see, it'll start leaving like spaces like this and much bigger spaces and stuff. So you'd, I would always recommend to at least stick two of these on your actual ship itself. Now, if you're back at your map and you do start to scan, of course, you're going to get the green icons when you're going to be scanning your keythane. Now, keep in mind, each of these icons, when you move your mouse on top, shows you a quantity of keythane. So I have 310,000 units and 410,419.1 units of keythane. Now, pretty much, these units of keythane are in patches. So, as you can see, if I move all over these units, all over these green dots, I know that pretty much this patch has 310,419. So if I land on any of these patches and I'm going to start uh, mining the keythane, all of these patches are going to be drained. So this patch has a total of 310,000. So keep that in mind that there is a limit to all the keythane. As you do see, let's move on some of my patches. I do have some of them mined out. You see it's light green, see keythane zero. Keythane 100 and 100,000. I already started mining on that one. This one's finished, keythane zero. So I am testing out my keythane on this one and it's pretty much coming to an end this one is very low i haven't gotten there at all but it's at four forty four thousand only so it's good to keep in mind that there is a limit to this resource so uh keep that in mind this one has a very very high yield it's 401,000. now another disadvantage is if you're playing the game and then you mine the keythane but then you mess something up or you uh, cancel and revert to your launch or revert to your space uh, whatever a space plane building center you will lose the key thing that you mine so i'd highly recommend you don't cancel your ship i highly recommend you return to your station or return to your fab fab whatever the hell you want to call it and continue resend on another ship because if you mine the key thing and you want to quit it that key thing that you mine will be lost so you will lose that resource why i say that because that happened to me i mined the key thing and then i messed the ship up it crashed on takeoff and then i'm like screw it I'm uh, gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna restart and I restart. But the moment you mine your keythane, the the keythane actually goes. It might be fixed in the later updates. I'm not sure. And if not, otherwise, just keep an eye on that in case you mine your keythane and you mess something up. It's always better to keep the ship if you can still uh, extract the keythane from your containers. And if not, you know you lost it anyway. So there it is. Uh, keep in mind that it is limited the resource. So you don't have quite a lot of it on the planets, especially this one with the amount of uh, mines I have placed and the amount of storage tanks I have, especially on the sample ship that you have seen, I can pretty much hold 120,000. And uh, that's pretty much it when it comes down to using and consuming your keythane. So now you know what part does what, what part does everything. And now if you want, we can show you, or I can show you one of uh, my keythane transporters in progress, but hopefully I'll get it finished and upgraded and done so I, I think i might even be able to get this uh, small little thing into space once it's completed so we do have the kt3 and here it is this is a my keythane transporter you see i have drills in the front three drills in the front i have a couple of sas's in the back two large converters in the front so i can convert much quicker of course that means a lot of extra weight if i don't need the weight i can always keep one converter but then again I'll just balance it. I do have my ISAP generator and I do have my two scanners in the back as well. So uh, completely fully ready, still in testing progress, not complete. But this is it for your keythane tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and happy gaming. See ya!